Eclectic Crafter here. I'm going to make my grandniece a, an apron. Uh, I had to make a pattern. So it really was as simple as, you know, measuring her <laughs> and then drawing it out. Uh, I had cut it out when I realized, hey, I probably should film this part too. Hopefully I'm catching in the screen because I'm just reaching up. <laughs> I'm not very tall, so... Okay, and we're so pause. I'm stitching out. Let me get the design. I'm stitching out this design. This is my test. All right, it's a purchase design, but you always want to run a test because, like this one, bound up in here, and that could just be my type of machine that does it. But what I did was bring it into embrilliance and take out all hidden stitches. I also needed to adjust it down a little bit smaller because my grandniece is only seven, so she's kind of tiny. And uh, that dropped some of the stitches. This company happens to make, they're kind of well stitched in some of them. And you do have to definitely run a test on fabric equivalent to what you're going to use. Oh, my thread just broke. So we've started it out. Now she loves pink, but I chose to use the orange for the apron because she wanted pink in some of the stitching. And instead of using like a darker pink on a light pink apron, I thought, well, I'll just, you know, a lot of contrast. She loves colors. And I'm going to, the this binding, it's a type of very small binding that I had made up for something years ago. And I always make extra, lots of extra. So I am going to re-iron it. Let's see. <laughs> The width is there, so I will take it and I will fold, you know, one half is already folded in, and I will fold the other half in, so that I, it's a kind of binding that, it's a double fold binding, so I can just slide it on, and then the, it'll also be the ties. And I thought the pink worked. It's a lot of color going on there. Myself, I tend to stay with beiges and browns, but... Oh, um, nothing against people that recommend other products. I, I'm not in the market to sell you something because, you know, I'm not selling it. It's not mine. I'm going to turn this off. It's kind of warm on my fingers. This little iron, you can pick up at Walmart, just about anywhere. I actually did order this online. At the time I got it, I was working a lot, and I just wanted it to be there when I had a day off. But I did see it at Walmart, and I think it was like, well, $25. We'll round up. It was about $25 at Walmart, and it works great. Now, I don't have any water in it so that I can do some dry stitching, but it will, or stitching, dry ironing. I use it for small iron-ons and such. Works great. Um, actually, I think it worked better than my press. But it also has a couple of little steam holes, so if you're wanting to steam. And it has a little point for when you're wanting to get in the corners. Just thought I'd mention that, because that is what I'm going to use to get this ironed into place. We will get this all ironed out for the binding and in the meantime this has stopped stitching and i see a lot of white on top so i'm going to take this off and see what's going on with that something is not working with my setup anymore i mean i have a samson note 9 it's just barely a year old i like to buy things when the next model comes out and, you know they just i got 300 dollars off but it's It'll start doing the video, and sometimes it'll shut off. And a lot of the time, I just lose the film altogether. I filmed us making cookies. My grandniece and I making cookies. 
she's homeschooled, so there was the need to uh, work with fractions, that kind of thing. And what better way? So that's what I'm teaching her about fractions. And she was so excited. She loved the idea that she was going to be, even, it's just her hands. That was the agreement. Just the hand. That's all I put in was my hands. Um, but anyhow, when I went to edit it, it was corrupted. I do all my filming with this phone. And I've uploaded, what, five films? But I've made like ten. <laughs> so i got to figure something else out. I'll... There's no buying a new camera. That That's just not in the money right now. But I'll figure something out. Get this phone to keep working correctly. I don't know. Maybe it's my memory card. I need to. I'll start with the least expensive part. I'll get a new memory card. Mm. And it's funny. When you call... And say, hey, there's a problem with this. They always assume, oh, well, she's old, so she just doesn't know. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this since before you were born. I know. Oh, oh well. Why? What is the matter with you now? I may have to stop this film altogether. All of a sudden, things just want to fight with me. There we go. This machine, you can thread it if you don't move it forward. And my files are all Pez <laughs> because I've always used Brother. And this machine, it'll it'll take a different file. Uh, it'll use them all. So I am using a Pez and a FOP machine. And that... I had thought could possibly be why it was doing it. But what it does is it's it stitches some of the jump stitches. And then like it's not going to go from this one to the next one even though the machine is asking for the next color. You thread it. If you hit start at this point it's going to stitch a lockdown stitch here then jump to where it's supposed to actually be. So I've done just enough on it to realize it's going to do that. And now I hit the forward. Love the machine. It's just doing something different. I did convert one. It's a VIP3. And I converted this file to that. Yeah, it wouldn't even read it. <laughs> so, and Brilliance is what I used. And I guess it didn't convert it. I just opened it up and then saved it as a separate file, as a different file. There's no telling it, don't convert it. It really is as simple as just saving it as something else. This file does three outlines before it starts doing the underlayment, and I don't understand why. That's a lot of... I don't think that it's the same people that do all of the patterns there. I mean, I bought this years ago. And I've used a lot of their patterns, but like I've got one cat pattern that literally tore a hole in my shirt. So I cut that area out, embroidered on some fabric, and put a panel across it. I didn't lose the shirt, but I won't use that design again. It was bad. And this, I, it doesn't need to be outlined three times. Or, it doesn't need a stitch laid out around it three times before you do the underlayment and then pull it in. Unless you've got way too many stitches 
because the whole idea of the outline, the under outline, and the underlayment is to keep the fabric flat. If you don't have proper underlayment under a design, it's when you start stitching, it's going to pull that fabric in, and you're going to have puckering all over the place. You can salvage some designs if you really love the design. Sometimes just using more stabilizer helps. And as it is, my son bought me a giant roll of this. It was supposed to be a medium weight. I mean, I picked it out online. We don't have anything local in this town. Nope, Joanne's closed up probably 10 years ago. and. Oh, I hate that. It also puts this one really long stitch stitch. I would never use this pattern for something I was wanting to sell. But it's going on a seven-year-old ch chest while she's cooking. So I thought, all right. I, she loved the design. I think it's adorable. And I'm, I've never been able to use it. Might as well get something out of it. So, yeah, I'm going to use it. But... Yeah, it has a running long stitch right across the top of it, that batter in the measuring bowl. That makes no sense. And it is there. I went back and re-downloaded it. It is their file. I don't think you're going to want to watch the whole thing stitch out. We're going to turn it off before it turns itself off. And we're back. And I'll be back. Hi. I tried to make the, you know, what is it, the golden square or whatever. And, uh on a table and I'm trying a different kind of a tripod it doesn't squeeze my phone quite as tight let's see if this video survives I almost couldn't download the first bits I kept stopping it taping because mostly this is a test but when with this new machine what I have started doing well I got Here we go. I ordered this thing. And they call it the quilting hoop. It's an 8x8. Eight eight. So, you stick the stuff on the back. And then you stick the fabric on here. And it has mar uh, mar magnets. Wow, couldn't say that word. To hold it in place. Well, this being too small for the mag, you know, to fit across, I had to do a little rigging, and I put a basting stitch in there. But when I was doing the test, I also basted it. I set it right up in my computer before I saved it to the thumb drive. This fop doesn't have Wi-Fi so you have to use a thumb drive to get your patterns on really I don't know why this is so, it won't pull out normally with a basting stitch you get enough to get a hold of and you just pull and this one there it's giving me a hard time Anyhow, there's absolutely some stuff to clean up on here. I don't know if it's showing up, but we do have some stitches that I'm going to have to get my glasses out to see them, to trim them all up. But, not going to worry about that so much right now. This, put those up. These are the scissors I use for my embroidery machine. I had bought... Oh, you know, like 20 years ago, <coughs> excuse me, when I got my first embroidery machine, I had bought the little Fiskars with the curve. And I know some people really love them and recommend them. And I, ha I use them for different things, but not for this. Maybe for trimming on an applique or something. Because I don't want to ruin these. Um, they're very flimsy feeling in your hand but they snip real well 
Um, this pair is probably a good, well, it's probably 20 years old. And they're getting a little worn out. You know, they've snipped a lot of threads. And I do have another pair that I had ordered recently. And they came and I was using them. And I set them down in senile old lady. Can't remember where she set them down. I wasn't using them with the embroidery machine. That was a mistake. So, I tend to... Oops. Might want to snip those. I can use this for the back. You don't want to leave all those running stitches across the back of it because it will pull on the fabric, okay? And if this fabric, it is cotton. So when it's washed, it is going to draw up a little. And the design might look a little different after it draws up some. Never have had it do much, but that's because normally I... I will wet my fabric down and then iron it dry, which is how I learned to pre-shrink fabric for quilting, you know, a thousand years ago. But I don't know what they do nowadays from what people seem to be saying online. I guess they don't necessarily pre-wash their fabric. It's not, you want to make sure, <laughs> I mean, if this ran, and I, it, it, say my niece throws it in with an adorable little shirt that has a lot of white on it and colors and stuff like that, and she throws this apron in there, and the apron dye runs, she's ruined a whole load of laundry, and especially that adorable little shirt. So... Pre-washing is a good idea, but when you're doing things to sell, they will not look as good unless you starch them and iron them. And just get spray starch, which I do have someplace. <laughs> I don't, most of my stuff I don't sell. Mostly I give things away, especially in quilts. I've only ever put... I put some baby quilts up for sale like 10 years ago or so. And um, recently I put a mini mouse quilt up for sale. But when it expired, I didn't bother to repost it. No one purchased it because, you know, they tend to be expensive. Okay, these tidbits, if you've got space, I would save them. Because, like this one... I had the stabilizer already attached to that hoop. So I put a, some strips that I had laying here and would cover it. I put that in the back. I just floated underneath for the stabilizing of the pattern. And that worked great. Now that I've got my jumps, long running jump stitches trimmed I'm going to trim up a piece of this to fit over it let me go to work this is not actually it's iron on and soft so it'll work as long as it's yes these are <laughs> there used to be a sticker on it that said don't touch because I caught my son using these to cut paper. <gasps> yes, my sons have death wishes. I one time came home from work and my oldest was very nervously approaching me. I broke your sewing machine. I'm like, what do you mean you broke my sewing machine? This was my original fop that I, and I'd only had it for maybe a year. I was still paying on it. <laughs> They give you home back in school. Now see, it pulls the line crooked. So if it's a garment, I normally will cut out the piece, you know, like a big rectangle that I want to embroider on and embroider on it and then cut it out to size. But 
I didn't want to waste this fabric. It was actually very expensive fabric, and I thought, you know, I'll just cut it out and trim it around. It's an apron for a seven-year-old. Anyhow, he had uh, come home to finish his pillow. He was so excited. And he sat down at my fop and tried to sew and jammed it all up. The needle was never center again. I took it in and had it fixed. And it came home and still wasn't center. And I kept telling them, it's off center. Get down here and look, it's off center. No, 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 no. <laughs> Whatever. It just died about a year ago, I guess. Completely. So, it survived that catastrophe and even if it was slightly off center I just adjusted the needle you know tap the button one millimeter over okay and now it's on center you just adjust but after that I told him you if you want to sew you use my old singer I have a 1948 singer it'll, it'll sew through a car he can't hurt that it's completely mechanical he said, no, I don't think I ever want to sew again. And he never sewed again. He's 35? Okay. So that's my pretty little pattern. It now has... <laughs> that is adorable. And it now has something soft on the back. So my next thing will be this binding that, you know, I went and cooked dinner and didn't take care of it so now we've got this still to take care of I usually put a box down on the other side if I'm working on binding <laughs> it just works you know something I can throw it in and it won't, the cats won't attack well cat my old Tom passed away last Friday and haven't quite gotten used to him being gone <sighs> okay so this is going to be a lot of me ironing, and I would just be jabbering. So we are going to pause. So we've got it done. Turned out quite cute, I thought. And today we will. Be, it'll be used to make cookies. Thank you for joining me with the eclectic crafter. Bye bye. <laughs>